Hi guys, and welcome to our video on histograms, not your ordinary bar graph. Alright, so you might be wondering what the heck is a histogram? We're going to tell you. Okay, a histogram is basically a bar graph. If you notice here, it looks exactly like a bar graph normally looks, except for there's one thing missing. If you notice, there is no space between the bars. Normally the bar graphs have the bars and then a space and then another bar, they look like buildings. Okay, so this has no spaces between the bars and it deals with intervals, whereas a normal bar graph is talking about just amounts in a certain, like, you know, this many people like dogs, this many people like cats, so on and so forth. This is talking about intervals, so this would represent maybe one through four and five through eight, okay? Um, and the intervals are going to be of equal size and they do not overlap, which means that the data that's in this bar of the histogram does not overlap with the data that's in that bar. Um, this is kind of one of those con uh, concepts that we kind of have to show you how to do it in order for you to get a better understanding, so we're going to go ahead and show you how to make a histogram. Okay, the first step in making a histogram is to make a frequency table of the data values using equal size intervals. Basically what that's saying is that the data that you have listed on your sheet, talking about the ages of, of the employees, is just a lot of numbers. And if you just had to go and count every single number, that gets kind of cumbersome. So what you want to do is a frequency table is basically keeping track of how many times a certain value comes up. So what we really want to do is figure out what our range is first. Okay? So our range in this case, our lowest number in that amount is 65, and our smallest number is 22. So our range is going to be 43. So that means that we're starting at 22, going to 65, and it's got a range of 43. So there's 43 different numbers in between those two. So once you find your range, now you want to figure out what your interval is going to be. Because remember, we're not going to count every single number and have a bar for 62, for 59, right? We're going to keep it to where we're doing an interval of that. So if we've got 43 full values, you kind of got to think about how many intervals you want to represent. Um, a good rule of thumb is to do at least four, um, because you don't want just two intervals. So what I would say is we'll do intervals of ten. Okay, so that just means we're going to start at our lowest number, um, and in this case we'll probably start at twenty, and then go up ten from there. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the frequency. So once you have your frequency table, what you're basically doing is that you're telling which data it is that you're counting, and we're counting the ages. And if you notice, I did intervals of 10. From 20 to 29 is 10, from 30 to 39 is 10, so on and so forth. So remember, our range was from 22 to 65, so obviously, you know, we've got a little bit of leeway here, but that's okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to go through and you're going to count all your numbers in your data to see how many times a number um, from 20 to 29 shows up. So for 20 to 29, you should get 4. From 30 to 39, you get 3. From 40 to 49, you should get 1. And 50 to 59, 2. And 60 to 69 is 2. Now, obviously, you could also go back and count your tally marks to make sure that your tally marks add up to um, how much data you have. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this data, and then we're going to turn it into a histogram. All right, so now that you have your frequency table, you're going to use your frequency table to plot the frequency counts on the y-axis of the histogram. So basically, you have our x-axis here and our, I'm sorry, our x-axis here and our y-axis here. So on the x-axis, you have your intervals, right? We went from 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, so on and so forth. And here's where we're counting our frequency. Okay, so basically what you do is you look at your table. We saw that the 20 to 29 was 4. So basically what you do is you just make yourself a bar, right, it goes up to 4. Then our 30 to 39 was 3, so that's going to come right here. And our 40 to 49 was 1, so that's going to be right there. The 50 to 59 was 2, which is going to be a little bit higher. And then our 60 to 69 was also 2. Okay, so basically all this is doing is it's giving you a visual. Just by looking at it right away, you can tell that the highest ages were from 20 to 29, then it goes down to 30 to 39, 
and you can see that the 50 to 59 and 60 to 69 remain the same. So this is just another way to display data and to show intervals instead of doing each individual piece of data. So now I want you to go ahead and uh, go on to example two, do that by yourself. It's a histogram and you're gonna answer some questions. Pause the video and then we'll come back and see if you, you did it correctly. And we'll do some practice in class on how, how to actually make histograms. All right guys, so if you should have been looking at your histogram, the first thing that you should do when you look at the histogram is determine what it is that it's talking about. And you should have noticed it was talking about students and what they scored on a test. And obviously it didn't say who scored a 50, a 51, a 52, it did ranges. So the first question was, how many students scored at least an 81 on the test? So at least an 81 means an 81 or higher. So the two intervals you had were 81 to 90 and 91 to 100. So anybody that fell in this range or this range scored at least an 81. So you should have added this number to this number and you should have gotten 12 plus 6, you should have gotten 18 on this, okay? Uh, number 2 is asking you how many students scored less than 71 on the exam. So in order for them to score less than 71, obviously the first one under 71 is 70, so anybody that was behind that 71, the 51 through 60 and the 61 through 70 are the people that scored under a 71, and when you add those two together you should have got 7. And the last question was, can you determine the highest exam grade from the histogram? No, you can't, because you can determine that six students scored between a 91 and 100, but you don't know what their score was. They could have gotten anywhere from a 91 to 100, and you don't know what the highest score was. So again, this isn't a way to get that specific data. It's just a way to display ranges. Okay? Um, so if there's anything that you're confused about, make sure that you go back, rewind. Like I said, in class tomorrow we will be practicing making histograms and reading them as well. Uh, make sure you answer the question at the end of the, uh, of the notes, and I believe it is, uh, how does a histogram differ from a bar graph? Because there are differences. And come ready to class tomorrow with any questions or concerns, and we'll see you tomorrow.